Yo. So my sister broke up with her boyfriend, and I did what any good little brother would do. I went to go get her a six-pack of White Claw. And needless to find out, there is a mango shortage. That's how you know economically we've hit peak oil is when there isn't White Claw Mango Edition. Ah, who am I to judge? Anyways, November 1st, Where the Minds Meet 2 is coming with Dr. Gabor Mate, Dr. Dennis McKenna, and Dr. Joe Tafur, hosted by Giselle Ugardi, presented by Stationary Astronaut, and the Med City Beat, and Social Butterfly, and Social Works, and whatever other companies we attach their name to, you're going to see all sorts of promotions coming up all October. You're going to get annoyed of it, so you might as well go get your tickets now at www.wherethemindsmeet.com, or you can jump the gun and just go to eventbrite slash where the minds meet. We'll see you at the show. Well, this episode with Ashley Richter with three A's was quite entertaining. Lots of laughs. She made an announcement that she's never told anybody ever. Not even her great grandmother knows. She's got a pet dinosaur. She named him Pickles. Well, it went through a transition period. So initially she was named Princess and then crossed over to the other side call it and he is now named pickles so um, he's 387,000 years old um, I don't know how Ashley we didn't get into that how she ended up with um, used to be an artist formerly known as princess but it was very interesting on a serious note she was able to open up and You'll hear it in the show where there's this moment, this aha moment, a eureka moment where we got to break bread and go deep beyond the world of makeup because we already know she's born with it. Enjoy the show. This episode is brought to you by Kano CBD. You wouldn't believe it. I smoked for years, had all of my tracheas pulled out. One drop a day of the Kano CBD oil, and my life goes into overdrive. I can finally whisper sweet nothings into my wife's ear. Hold on, let me take my drop. Boop. The world. Begins to change when you consume Kato CBD. www.katocbd.com Code word astronaut for 10% off. And I'm gonna be high as a as a fucking man. And now, the stationary astronaut. Just like that. And I don't care if we need to wash off lipstick or mascara or whatever. Why would... Off the tip of that fucking mascara. microphone. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you might... I've seen your eye work. <laughs> yeah. So, mascara. Yeah. <laughs> Talking to the microphone. We're going to be talking... Oh, shit. I have my questions on that phone, but you can just get some story shots. You can no. use my phone. It, yeah, then, yeah, 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 for sure. And then just mention, and then we'll share. Perfect. Because really, I already have the majority of them memorized. It's just there I are some that I would like to. Let's get this mic turned up a little bit. Oh, sorry. Check, How do you check, do that? check, 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 check. How do you make it not lock? Ooh, just give him your password. Is he going to remember? Zero seven zero six ninety seven. What the fuck? Yeah. Zero seven zero six ninety seven. That must be her birthday. It is. So it's what? Uh, July sixth. Yep. 
That's pretty cool. 1997. Oh, 1997. Oh, I'd probably turn it off. Dang. You don't need flash with these lights up in here. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be interesting. This is going to be interesting. Well, here's the deal. You didn't understand the couple worms you fucking opened up when you opened up to me the first thing you said out of your mouth was there's not enough weirdos here <laughs> and i was like you don't know who you're speaking to <laughs> but the real question is you don't know who you're speaking to. <laughs> check this out check this out though you didn't see the first girl who was at lincoln drink the first guest she beat at me there one? at our last lincoln okay. drink she was wearing 12 inch oh, Brie. croc platforms. Brie, yeah. I know Brie. So, you want to talk about weirdos <laughs> not uniting? <laughs> okay, me and her. <laughs> she can be, we can be the only representatives. <laughs> what made you say that? Um, I just feel like I'm kind of in the alternative community now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like barely stepping into it. And I really want. Lincoln drink to become something that everyone comes to. Mm -hmm. Um, I want my friends that are tattoo artists, my friends that are painters, my friends that are anything that kind of revolves in that world that doesn't really get noticed on Instagram or on social media to come to that event and then use it as a tool for them as well in their business too, just as much as influencers, models, photographers, whoever does. Um, And that's kind of why I said that because it's just like I try to get my tattoo artist friend to come and he was like, I don't know just cause it doesn't appeal. Yeah. And so I'm like, we need more weirdos cause then it would appeal to everyone. Yep. And so not just kind of like the same playing field, kind of elaborate a little bit. I'm glad you brought that up because we did with our first jump off with the panel. Um, it was just to compile creatives. That's what, and we can't control who decides to click attend. Right. So like, it really does come down to us tapping into a network and then hoping that spreads like wildfire and the social butterfly effect takes place where Ashley will take it upon herself to bring in weirdos because I can only do so much. And as can you, you know, and everyone else. So like, that's really where it's cool that you did know the girl who was rocking the crock platforms that she had to fly to China to get. (laughs) Yeah. I used to do modeling. So I, a few years ago, so I definitely know all the photographers in the game right now. Most, most of them. So kind of modeling, just like the portrait stuff. Um, 2017 is kind of when the Instagram model thing in Minneapolis kind of took off. And um, I was part of that original group. Um, I, like Sydney Sand was a part of it. Tay Lee was a photographer. Um, Eric Ronning, he's pretty big and he's been to a few Lincoln Drink events. Like I know a lot of those original people. Gabby mm-hmm. was kind of the main, Gabby Thomas was the kind of the main starter, I feel like, and the person that kind of took off and inspired people to do it. Um, and so I was bright red hair. Fair skin, didn't wear, really wear like a bunch of makeup, but wore enough that I stood out from everyone. And um, yeah, I met Brie through a lot of different events. We used to host meetups with photographers and models and then kind of all hang out. So, yeah. Now we found our new meetup. <laughs> yeah, Lincoln drinks the best. Are you ready? I'm a fan. Am I ready for what? Because it's growing. I know. We've, we've <laughs> it's already had be to, insane. I know. We've already had to move venues like... Five times. Dang. Because we keep breaking fire code. Because <laughs> there's too many people. Yeah, too many people. So it's, I think we found our home now. Okay. And it's a nice place, downtown Minneapolis. And they love us, so that's good. Right, yeah. They got us on the rooftop. That was so fun. I think it was a way better location. Last time I was like sweating. I was wearing a like, bodysuit and I was like <laughs> tapping underneath like my rib cage. And I was like, there's literally sweat dripping through my shirt right now. Not okay. And I was wearing makeup, so I was not happy but i was like temperature is okay <laughs> i'm comfortable and i'm not sweaty so it was it's perfect on the rooftop <laughs> is that why you keep your apartment so cold yep <laughs> and i don't sweat i don't believe in so it so your makeup doesn't melt off no never <laughs> 64 degrees always <laughs> See- <laughs> I can't take you seriously. This is the issue. I just want to giggle. 
That was the best. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> Where do we awesome. draw the line behind or between uh, makeup being used for insecurity and makeup being used for empowerment? That's a tough one. I mean, I think it's definitely still like an apparent thing that some people are really insecure with how they look and how they um, see themselves on the outside um, and use that as something to cover that up. Um, I think that Instagram especially has, and YouTube, I would say YouTube as well, has given a platform to see like how creative it can be and kind of an expressive thing more so than a insecurity thing. Um, a lot of people have asked me, like, do you wear it because you're insecure with yourself? And then I was like, uh, no, absolutely not. And so I post half, like, I mean, I post pictures mainly of just me wearing makeup, but I post pictures without makeup. I post stories all the time without makeup. And I'm very honest and open about it because at the end of the day, I take this off and that's what I look like. And I have to be satisfied with that. And having insecurities about yourself and what you look like is not, no matter how much makeup you put on, you're still going to be insecure. Um, so it kind of starts like looking at yourself in the mirror and being like, I am beautiful with and without. You can look amazing with both. And it's kind of drawing that line and making you feel confident. Other people might think you look good without makeup or look great with, with makeup. But if you don't think so, then it really doesn't matter, I guess. Um, but it's definitely a huge debate. Like, a lot of people are very insecure about themselves. And I have my own insecurities, too. I'm not perfect. But um, I still am, like, super appreciative of who I am. And I see my ins insides reflect the outside, too. So it kind of all ties in together. As a leader in the community um, with your creative venture, which is because if people haven't checked out your Instagram, it's on fleek. It's growing. Just because you bring it to a different level, which is actual art. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of where I would draw the line between makeup artists and ones I can see going somewhere. Yeah. Uh, taking advantage of the zombie pub crawls mm -hmm. and the unique holidays we have. Right. I saw you with your Cardi B rendition. Mm -hmm. Like that was super cool to do the checkered stripes with, you know, you're kind of basing it off of one of uh, an outfit you wore. Yeah. Which is badass. Mm -hmm. And that's where I know, and you can see this with tattoo artists too, where you know a good tattoo artist because they're an artist outside right. of, the, of the needle realm. Mm -hmm. Do you consider yourself in the same boat? As like an artist outside of just makeup? Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, I've always been just a creative person my whole life. Mm -hmm. Like I, I was that 10-year-old girl that would lock myself. I used to live with my grandparents. My family did. And my grandpa had, my grandparents had this huge room and I would just lock the door and I would just play CDs after CDs on a boom box. And I would pretend like I'm performing in front of all these people. And I would always do stuff like that. I would, I took like four art classes in one trimester my senior year. Like I've always just done whatever to do, like that I could express myself in just cause I didn't always feel like I fit in like per se. So yeah. what made you feel like that? I was, I played sports. I was a, uh, varsity athlete. I played soccer. I quit 2016 and I played since I was three. So it was a long time and I played college soccer too for a year. And so I was that athlete and I was involved in like national honor society and all the clubs and I should have had all the friends um, but I just never, never connected with them. Like how you would think that you would being a part of teams and stuff. It was like, yes, I was on the team and they liked me when we played, but we didn't talk after, like it was just for the team purpose and it just kind of dwindled away. So I, I mean, I had really good friends in high school and I'm still best friends with one of my friends I've been friends with since seventh grade. So, um, and she's amazing, but it just, I didn't always feel like. In my small town, mm -hmm. I was meant to be there. So, Where does your creativity draw from? Anything outside, how people talk to me, mm -hmm. how I'm feeling, um, people that I'm inspired by. Like That's what this week was kind of about. Uh, I've done Kehlani, her album cover, Cardi B, and Post Malone. And um, my one on Saturday is going to be my friend, Mitch. His name is Kid Quill. And he's inspired me a lot. And he actually helped me start my journey. And it's um, stuff like that. Like, I'm really inspired by all those artists. Like, Kehlani and Cardi B being two of 
I would say my favorite female artist ever. Um, and people hate on Cardi B all the time, but she's, she's amazing. And anyone that discredits that it doesn't know what they're talking about. And Post Malone just dropped one of the best albums that I've heard in a really long time. And then my friend Mitch was the one who told me to focus on makeup and my dream will come true. And that was in end of February. And that's when I started it. So it's just taking inspiration from legit anything that I can get my hands on, I guess. How do you let your personality out? <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't ever shut up. Really? It, it's always out. It it is always out. You can ask any of my friends, I am the most outspoken person. You will know I'm in a room, I'm not quiet. Mm -hmm. And I don't look quiet either. So I mean I showed up to Lincoln Drink with yellow, orange and um, pink on one side with stars and the green, purple, and blue with stars on the other side, just circles around my eyes. And it was just like, hey, I'm here. Like, tattoos and yep. colored hair and just a lot to look at, but I'm here. So it doesn't really stop. It's always there. Like, you, my job, they all know when I'm there. Sassy always, attitude always, but always kind of like spunky and moving around like this jigging with it i guess but yeah it's always there it's always out it's not every day you get to tell somebody to their face that their look is fucking loud yeah <laughs> it's loud i am here and i'm here to stay so <laughs> that throws the five senses for a loop no dude she looks really loud <laughs> yeah you're like wait what <laughs> What about the eyes? Are the eyes the pillar of um, a makeup regime, regimen, I should say? For me, yes. Okay. Um, but if you kind of look deep into it, lip art is a thing. Mm -hmm. Face art is a thing. Um, some people do full body, full body makeup. Um, I mainly stick to the eyes because I do work full time mm -hmm. and I do go to work almost every time after I do this makeup. Mm -hmm. So I wear these crazy things out in public and it's 100% wearable. I don't put things on my face for the purpose of once you start doing it, mm -hmm. you can't stop. And so people kind of know me for the eye art. I'll do it like a little bit down here, but I won't ever typically, maybe for Halloween I will, but it's not wearable to me and it doesn't fit with my everyday life. So I'm like on special occasions, like I... I maybe we'll go down there, but the eyes are main my main focus. Um, a lot of my friends, a lot of people that know me have told me that my eyes are the most intriguing thing about me. And so you take what people say is your best like feature and then you expand it. And that's kind of what my focus was when I started. Where's the weirdest place you've left an eyelash? I don't leave them anywhere. They're too expensive. They're thirty dollars for these damn eyelashes. So I, no matter where I go, I'm going out partying, and I'm gonna stay somewhere. Bring a case, and I take them off every every night, and I put them in the case to keep their shape. I take good care of them. <laughs> I wash them <laughs> like I fucking wash them like it's my damn hair. But I don't wash my hair, so that. <laughs> Do you have nicknames for your eyelashes? Oh, no. That's fucked up. You baby them. They're like your pets. You pet yeah. them. You wash them. You give them baths, and you don't even have names yeah, for them. Yeah, I know. It's rude. But they kind of like get their wear, and then they're just kind of done. They just yeah. throw them away. So it's like, why name them? It's just like a fish dying and flushing it down the toilet. So you don't wash your hair? No. <laughs> what the fuck? Ever. I do, but it's... Yeah. All my friends know not to touch my hair ever. Really? Yeah. It's been like a week. Can I smell it? Um, probably not. I can't. <laughs> Actually, I don't think it smells bad. It just, yeah, I don't let anyone it touch. It doesn't smell bad? I don't like let anyone touch my hair. Like if I had a significant other and they were trying to like scratch my head, I'd be like, no. For real? Don't do it. Yeah. What is that? What? what is it a phobia? No, it's their oily ass hands touching my head that Ooh. I don't want to be greasy. Now we're getting deep. <laughs> we're, we're finding some shit out, Dominique. I'm just being honest. I've, your hands are the most, like, one of the most oily parts on your body, and they're trying to rub it on my head when I can't wash my hair. And so they're putting grease and making my hair oily. So don't touch it. <laughs> are you a germaphobe? No. <laughs> but I just know that I can't wash my hair, so... Okay, there's this epidemic going on where girls who are made up, dolled up, are handing out hugs to men with white shirts on. And leaving their face print on them. 
Are they? How do we prevent this epidemic? I don't do that. So, um, because my face is worth more than their white t-shirt. <laughs> So, are you one of those girls who cocks her head <laughs> yeah. way to the like, west? I make sure that I don't know, because it will. Black is, like, worse than white, though. The black shirts are worse than the white shirts. You've learned through experience. Yeah. Well, all my friends, like, wear black. All they do is wear black, mm-hmm. so it's just, like, kind of duck them. hug them. <laughs> Yo, like Barry Sanders. <laughs> ah, watch the hips, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> That's awesome. So, like, where did your um, your love for, were you that, like, were you that sixth, seventh grader who just had to be dolled up before school, or did you not start wearing makeup till you were, like, 19? Like, what happened? Like, where did this obsession come from? So, uh, my mom is the biggest tomboy ever. Okay. She is, like, I just know how to put your hair up in a ponytail. I don't know how to braid it. I don't know how to do none of that. Like, I wore, like... Skorts, so I always had shorts under them so I could run around and like, yeah, I was that kid and I always just had my hair up in a ponytail and that was, that was it. And um, seventh grade, actually my best friend, this is the funniest thing because I always bring it up because it's the most hilarious thing. Like it's really fucked up, but it's like the funniest thing. I like look extremely young still. Like I look like I'm 15 and I'm 22, but like in seventh grade, I literally looked eight years old. And so it was really embarrassing because my friend was like matured way faster than me. was like a foot taller than me. just like wore makeup and I'm sitting here looking like a five-year-old <laughs> next to her. And she was like, Ashley, it's time. You need to wear makeup. I'm putting makeup on you and you're going to start wearing makeup. So the only reason why I started wearing makeup in the first place is because my best friend told me I had to. And so that's kind of where it started. And it was just like, my mom was like, okay, if you want to wear makeup, you can't wear anything on your face. You can just wear stuff on your eyes. So I wore like a little bit of eyeshadow, a little bit of eyeliner and mascara. And that's like all I wore until about like sophomore year of college. And that's when I actually started like buying foundation and stuff. So I actually, if you look at my like photos from like a year ago, I actually was like not good at makeup. Like, it's not at the caliber that I'm at now. So it's crazy. Or even, like, two years ago. Like, it was not It was not good. It was not. Where do you want to be in 18 months with your career? People always ask me that. That's, like, the biggest question is, like, what do you want to do? What is the goal? And I'm just optimistic to anything. Mm -hmm. Um, I just became a partner with Dermalogica. And so that was kind of a huge moment because I am a huge fan and – their skincare brand has like changed my skin because I have rosacea really bad. And so that's like helped me. But I just want to keep working with brands. Like overall, my dream would be, be to have my own cosmetics line. But that is something that I won't, 18 months is a year and a half. Like I'm not, if I want to put together a cosmetics line, at least two years will go into building it. So I would have to start now. And that's just not where I'm at. But I mean, I would love to collab with a brand, make um, a line of products with them, with my name on it. Um, keep having social media grow. I mean, I do makeup, yes, but um, the picture isn't just makeup. It's not. Um, I want to be. I want to be a better person, and I want to make other people a better person. So that's kind of like I would love to like speak in front of people mm-hmm. and just like talk to people because my life hasn't been the easiest. I'm not here to throw a pity party or anything, but um, like I feel like I don't relate to a lot of influencers mm-hmm. online, and that I don't feel like I'm represented and what's happened to me or I am, but they just don't share it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I am 100% willing to share it. It's just, I'm not going to share it on my story. I want like a platform. Mm -hmm. People can come listen to me speak, Mm -hmm. um, and choose to, and not just have it be a story view, but like Mm -hmm. have it be an interactive and intimate kind of thing. So yeah, I don't know. Just kind of keep doing what I'm doing and see where it goes. I'm really optimistic. So you just opened up a can of worms. What? <laughs> you set yourself up. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm sitting here with a softball. All right. And you're just like ready just to fucking swing. Oh, a so- Oh, like a- I thought you meant like a soft ball, like a therapy, you know, like the squishy uh, ball. Powder me up, guys. <laughs> but you Please. meant like a, a soft ball, like a. Yeah, a but hard- we throw it underhand. Okay. We don't throw it overhand. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't my sport. I've tried to play it for like one season. I fell in a hole and quit. So. <laughs> my squirt didn't hold up. <laughs> didn't wear a squirt. My mom wanted me to play so bad. And I, 
she watched me like I was running in the outfield trying to catch a ball and I fell into a hole oh, in the no. in the field. And so she was like, yeah, this isn't your sport. Yeah. And I was like, I don't think it is either. Do so. you find yourself, uh, would you consider yourself um, dramatic? Oh, yes. I am the most dramatic person I know. Mm-hmm. Like right. 100%. Mm-hmm. Everything is a big deal. Like you can't tell me, like if I feel some type of way and you try to tell me that it's wrong, like I, like if you made me mad and you're like, you can't be mad, I'd be like, yes, I can. Like you are, and I'm just like, this is how I feel, and you're gonna know at all times, kind of thing. But I mean, it's like good and bad. It's kind of funny sometimes. My friends poke fun at me, and um, gets me a little pissed off. But it's it's pretty funny sometimes. Where does that come from? I don't know. My parents are really stubborn, but they are not like me. I am like mm-hmm. the diva of my family. I would say, like I'm always late, always. Like, I was supposed to go to my brother's soccer game the other day, or, like, oh, two weeks ago, and I was doing makeup, and I was supposed to be there at 1. I showed up at halftime. <laughs> I missed the whole first half of the game because I was doing makeup, and it's always fashionably late. Ashley's here, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's, yeah, it's just, I don't know. I, I think it's just because, like, I always, like, when I was younger, I was like, I'm going to be a star. And so I think I imprinted that in my head. And kind of became that but my parents are really stubborn my parents have attitudes but they're not like me Mm -hmm. like they're more like kept in and mine's like very loud and out there and so yeah yeah so has that um has that guided you because i know like i'm a peacocker right yeah i'm a fucking i got voted most dramatic out of my class my senior year you know type (laughs) shit you know like meant to be doing something that involved like where drama pays. Right. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> um, and so I kind of, I jive with it mm-hmm. and I understand it because people who aren't that way, they have no clue. And it's something that our, our, our clock just ticks that way Yeah, where we are very, we feel, and any psychologist will tell you this, people who are dramatic, they might feel a little bit more than the next person. They're unable to drown out sometimes just monotonous bullshit where mm-hmm. it really affects us. Yeah. And sometimes it, it bites us in the butt because we blow things out of proportion. But at the same time, it also guides our creativity because yeah. we feel. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's 100% me. Like I... Every situation, if I go go through anything, it is like the end of the world, Mm -hmm. always. You know, it always like hurts me so much. And I'm, yeah. Oh, and I just went through a whole situation with that just recently. And it's just like, it just hurts you and you just want it to like stop. But Mm -hmm. you got to keep it fucking moving. You can't just dwell, but it sucks still. But yeah, it definitely has helped me become like who I am in that sense. Uh, I'm really open to doing anything. Um, which is, like, the best part. Like, I don't have any boundaries. Like, I'll just go anywhere, do anything, say anything. Like, I came up to you and just said, whatever. You're like, who is this girl? <laughs> trying to buzz and shit, trying to tell me who, what, how to run this. But I'm here, you know? Just say what I want. And I think that it's it's kind of a bad quality, but I also use it as one of my best qualities um, just because... I take every opportunity like by the reins Mm -hmm. and just grab it and don't really like sit in the background and kind of wait for it to come to me. I just kind of do it myself. So, yeah. Well, that's, see, there's this thing that people, everyone is fighting. It's called fear. Mm -hmm. And the ones who do have an ability to put it to the wayside. The ones who are open and willing to take risk and to open up their mouth and in sometimes an inopportune moment, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You don't have fear running through your veins like the next person because you could probably list off a laundry list of friends who you know you would call them for an opportunity and they would immediately jump into an excuse. Yeah. Hey, will you fly? I need uh, someone to be my assistant. You'll make this much. I need you to fly out with me. Oh, you see. And then they go into excuse mode and I can think of more people than not who would say the same shit. I mean, I would say I had those people. Mm -hmm. I've eliminated a lot of people from my life that would do that. You know, I mean, like I have friends that are in situations. I have a lot of friends with babies a lot of friends with responsibilities and that's something that I would never ask them because I, that's a human that mm-hmm. they, you know, have to take care of. But I don't talk to any of those people. Like I think about that. Like when I'm hurting and I call someone and 
they aren't there, you know? It's like, you're not going to be there for me at my worst. Why would you be there for me at my best? Mm -hmm. So I don't have those people. Has that put you on an island? What? You and Amir? Like, put me by myself? Yeah. And like, I think so. I mean, but at the end of the day, like, I mean, I love having friends and I have really good people in my life. But if I'm not happy and I'm not um, proud of what I'm doing by myself, I have nothing. Like, I always say, like, I people always think I'm, like, a huge numbers person because I always am, like, oh, I hit 8,000. Oh, I hit 9,000. I'm just, like, shocked. I come from a town that's 12,000 people, and I'm climbing to, like, almost my population of my hometown. And um, as much as, like, I think it's great, if Instagram dies, at least I'm proud of what I did, you know? Like, that's what I always say because a lot of people are so, like, focused on it and I'm prepared for it to end at any point but I'm always going to be happy with the work that I put out and people saw at one point and so I mean I just kind of rely on myself at this point I mean I like I I don't want to discredit any of the people in my life that watch this because they're amazing and they know that and we have conversations about that and validate that relationship every day Um, if you're important to me you're important to me and I don't want you to go anywhere but yeah you just it has to be you. It has to be you that wants it and wants greater things. And if you don't, if someone else wants it for you, but you don't actually want it yourself, it's not going to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <sighs> what? I'm scared. <laughs> I feel like I'm playing therapist right now. Why? Because I have my low voice and I'm over here asking like about ASMR. mirror, mirror okay. on the wall. Who's the trippiest makeup artist of them all? <laughs> <laughs> Have so you we talked before we went hot. You don't consume marijuana, Mm-mm. but have you ever consumed a psychedelic? No, never. No, <laughs> you just live it. Yeah, what the I'm fuck? already crazy enough. I don't fucking need oh that shit. God. So, why do you self proclaim yourself as crazy? Because I am, I'm loud, I'm obnoxious. Look at me, like this is like toned down makeup today. Like, this isn't even like whatever. Like, what I usually walk into a room with, you're like, holy shit. Like, I had a table last night. Like, I would walk away, and they would talk about me, and I would hear them. And then I would come back, and then they walk away, and they'd talk about me. Like, it's just, I'm crazy looking. I am crazy. Like, I just, like I said, do what I want when I want. And that's insane to people. What was your makeup like for Pride Fest? I did, like, circles. Not, like... A full blown circle, but I did like a rainbow around my eye and then put stars. Mm-hmm. But it was like all the colors. Could you imagine if you created like this specific design and you got your band of disciples and like every crazy sold out show that comes to the armory, you have this conglomerate where you do their makeup before? Because you know, yeah, for festivals and stuff, it's fun to like mm-hmm. dress up a little bit differently, yeah. If you just compiled them and you and had they them, all looked like me. Yeah, they all like you just had your band of disciples. Just walk in, just like an <laughs> army. I'd feel like I was like Taylor Swift in that bad blood video with all my bitches behind me. And they're all droned out. Yeah. Like you did you blew <laughs> something into their fucking face. Glitter. Yo, oh, his oh, lots and lots of glitter. <laughs> they walk in just singing a Lady Gaga song. <laughs> Born this way. <laughs> telling you there's so much potential with this because i'm a male you know Mm -hmm. like me and makeup like uh it's never been considered in regards to like the worth obviously um for some stuff when i go on stage i've been powdered powdered up Mm -hmm. shit uh a couple years ago i overtook kal news station and i went in with this character called burt wellington and i kicked out the news anchor who has emmys behind his name and I stole his makeup chair. And then I made Laura Lee, my co-anchor, uh, powder me up. I was fucking owning that joint. Yeah, it's a little bit of Laura Lee, out. powder me up. <laughs> powder me up. <laughs> but it's fun, like, you know, because we see, we see it's just kind of like taboo mm-hmm. for males. And then now we're seeing, um, we're seeing the modeling industry just kind of shapeshift. Mm-hmm. As the L G B T Q I A S don't T U V. I don't want to leave any letters out. Leave a P. You gotta get a P in there. You always gotta always gotta have a P P P P. Um uh yeah, as that takes off. It's like the 
boundaries have been pushed so far Mm -hmm. with not just makeup, plastic surgery as well, to the point like we have, I love it, I welcome it, we have this freak parade. If people haven't been to the Twin Cities during Pride Week, you haven't lived. Right. There's this place called the Gay 90s where roller skates still exist. (laughs) Yeah. And like if you haven't experienced, you don't know what you're missing because you get to see this side of life that quote unquote normal people will never see unless they take a dip in the pool, a walk on the wild side. Yeah. Just to observe. I mean, yeah. Gay 90s though, I wouldn't say. I like Lush in the saloon. Those are the better, the better bars. Oh, you got the plug on the... I mean... God clubs? I mean, this year was my first pride kind of identifying as something of the LGBTQ community, so... Ooh, what do you identify as? I identify as pansexual, so I don't see de- gender as a, like, barrier. Yeah, so I love everyone. So, so you love everyone. Mm-hmm. Would that have a mixture of bisexual into it? In it? it is, but um, bisexual is usually, like, men and women. Mm-hmm. Um... M- Pan is like, yes, men and women, but you could furry like, conventions. You could like um, trans M to M to F or trans F to M, like just not really having a label on it. Like mm-hmm. I identify as he or he, I identify as she. But like if someone identified as they, mm-hmm. like I would have no problem with that kind of deal. Do you get offended if someone calls you a panty? No, a lot of people don't know. I just openly said that. Really? Yeah. So it doesn't bother me. We no. probably shouldn't say panty. Probably not. It's too close to the TR word. Yeah. And I don't get offended by it, but probably a lot of people yeah. would. So I probably wouldn't say that. So uh, back to furry conventions. Does that qualify? What? what? Does what qualify? Where people dress up as like animals in these I've costumes. Never seen that. You haven't? No. And they all got flaps <laughs> on the back and the front. I've never seen So that. they can get buck wild at these hotels at their furry conventions? I've literally never heard of this. Like, what are you? Are you part of the community or not, lady? I've never heard of a furry convention in what? my life. It so. is kind of has influence in pop culture. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, I'm it. under a rock. Before clearly. we know it, she's going to be full I'm going to be furry. In, the, in the furry. You're furry going to take festival. your makeup to a whole nother level. I'm going to look like a lion. <laughs> it's Easter. She's implementing ears into her wardrobe. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> Just turned myself into a rabbit. <laughs> Have you had the conversation with your parents yet about your uh, pansexual behavior? Um, I don't talk to my dad, so okay. that's um, pretty recent where I just stopped. Um, yeah, I didn't talk to him like my whole life, and then talked to him for three years, and then kind of just wasn't... If I don't get what I need out of a relationship, I, mm-hmm. I'm done. Like, mm-hmm. if it's not... Um, I want it to be um, beneficial to them and to me, and if I just see myself getting hurt all the time, I'm just done. And I don't care if it's my family, my friends, someone I've known for my whole life, I don't care. I'll just turn it off. Um my mom, no. She doesn't know, but that's fine. She can find out. I don't care. She sh- she doesn't really, um, she has no expectations, like, because I'm always just doing kind of crazy shit and whatever I want, and she um, supports me always. And so um, probably if she listens to this, her hearing this, she's not going to be shocked, and she's not going to be mad, and she's just going to be, like, you're my daughter, I love you, and I'm proud of you. So, you know, this is my mom. She's amazing. Mm-hmm. Do you find that tough to um, not have a comparable relationship with your father like some of your friends might have? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's been something that like I've struggled with a lot because especially in relationships, you seek for mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. in them. And so that's um, been the hardest part. And um, it's also really hard to sit there and be um, having having this much success mm-hmm. in creating myself and then have my dad try to take credit for for it. it it's the worst part because he has no right, you know, and he brags about it. I work in the same area that he works in. Um, and so everyone that knows him knows me. And so him bragging about me really bothers me and really, like, um, upsets me because he had nothing to do with it. Whereas my mom, my morals and my values, that's where it's all, that's the core, you know. And my mom set those in me and my mom... 
um, was a single mom and um, showed me how to be independent and do things on my own, where my dad did not. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's more so the fact I feel like the relationship part. I feel like I don't trust people. I feel like I don't value people like um, always. Um, And I have... I have expectations, but sometimes I feel like they're really unreasonable um, because I'm not only, I I don't want to say I'm seeking a father out Mm -hmm. of a relationship, but I'm seeking like a greater like feeling that I have with that void, you know? And so it's caused a lot of turmoil and I choose a lot of um, not good human beings Mm -hmm. and then get hurt by them and it kind of just triggers everything. So, but I mean... I don't really care. The only part I care about is I have two little brothers over there, you know, and they're really young and I love them a lot, but you know, they'll always know I love them and, but I can't sacrifice my own happiness when I'm doing so well. So yeah. But But you've, it's, it's so rare to come across a 22 year old who's self-aware to that degree Mm -hmm. where you understand relationship wise why we seek what we seek. Mm -hmm. I come from a single parent household as well. So it always just kind of came normal to, and this is just my friend's group to gravitate towards people who come from broken homes. Yep. And something about that turns into our homestead where if we surround ourselves with broken people, then we are no longer that abnormal loner. We finally have a community. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, my best friend, her her dad's not in the picture either. Mm-hmm. So can you kind of relate though? Mm-hmm. It helps like um I mean, I'm like I have friends that have amazing families and I am like I am so happy for you and I'm happy that you have like people to look up to for a relationship, but you know, it's nice to be able to like talk about why that hurts you cuz not everyone understands. Mm-hmm. Like I could be at work and be like my dad doesn't talk to me. He has gone a month without talking to me. Um, and he only talks to me when it's like, con- like convenient for him. Like he just sent me a text yesterday and I didn't talk to him in a month. And so it's just like, you try to tell people that haven't had that experience about it and they don't, they don't get it. They're like, Oh, that's sad. Whereas my best friend is like, t- actually talks to me about it and talks to me about my feelings cause she understands. So, you know, it's nice. Like you, sh- you gravitate towards people that are more like you. So it kind of sucks. But it's also nice because you have that person to relate to, but also (laughs) you're kind of turning away the people that, you know, have it good, I guess you could say. As we age, we start kind of um, morphing into the human being we are meant to be as opposed to the ones we might be currently. That's the cool thing about um, your, in your instance, being pansexual, that can cross pollinate into just professional life where... Mm -hmm. You know, I used to always just hang out with broken people and and the interesting type, but now I do kind of gravitate towards the the corporate perfection where they came from a two parent household, they're leaders of business, things like that. Typically, mm-hmm. um, not so much the broken individuals, and then that that pollinates into love life, where I vowed no more broken women. No more broken women. This is like seven years ago. I'm going, the woman I marry is going to come from a loving two-parent household. Their parents are going to tell her that they love her. Hugs and kisses before she leaves the door. What did I do? I went and found that. And then now we have a beautiful daughter. Mm -hmm. And then we get to rewrite the story. The story. Because I watched my only other sibling, my sister, only other blood sibling, go the opposite route. She's four years older than me broken ass, threw away her 20s, mm-hmm. made three kids, but threw away her 20s right. to an alcoholic cheater. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Finally graduated from that as she kind of kept going up the corporate ladder, graduated from that, but it broke her. Yeah. And that's a dangerous place to be. Males, we get through that shit. Yeah. I feel so much for females nowadays who are yet to find themselves mm-hmm. because it never ends well. Yeah. It ends with purpose, but it the the trajectory to get there is fucking wonky. Yeah, I was definitely in that. Um, the main reason why I'm so aware is because uh, last I want to say April, May, beginning of May, I started dating someone. Um, I've known his family for a hot minute. 
I went to prom with his brother, not like in a romantic way, as like a friend way, mm-hmm. and went to church with them. Um, but he was never there. He was never around. I didn't know him. And just started talking in social media. He didn't live here. He lived in a few states away. And we were talking, hit it off. He was like, you want to do something crazy? And of course, me being like, yeah, let's do it. He's like, let's go to California. And I was like, okay. I was like, but like, we probably should like talk um, first, like FaceTime or something um, to make sure like you're not going to murder me before I buy this plane ticket. Um, and we hit it off, started dating. Um and then thing I was living with my dad at the time, and um, I dropped out of school that February, and um, things kind of went south and weren't doing so hot. And With your dad? With my dad, mm-hmm. yeah. And so living there was not good. And um, my boyfriend, my ex-boyfriend wanted, um, we had talked about him moving here so we could be closer together. He was going to live with friends. His living situation didn't work out. And my living situation didn't work out. And I was either going to have to move an hour away, which I didn't want to do, or move in with him. And I made that decision. And we lived in the same apartment building downstairs together. Um, My first, I was not even 21. I was 20. Mm -hmm. And moved in with my ex-boyfriend. And it was great. And then um, all went south. And it was really bad. And um, if any of my friends can contest to this and my coworkers at the place that I worked at at the time, it broke me and it ruined me. And I'm 21 years old, um, not knowing where my boyfriend is when we both come home from work around the same time and I don't know where he is at random times or whatever. Um, and like that's a really hard feeling is like being at home in a home that you share with someone mm-hmm. and them not being there um, because they're out doing whatever they want and have no respect for the relationship. So that was hard. And then, um, the lying came and then, um, I got used for money a lot and I'm young, so I don't really, I mean, I had money, but not enough to support two people by myself. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I kind of was just done. I went to my childhood best friend's wedding. Um, he made me late to the wedding Um, I just barely saw her say I do and I cried over it because I was like, I just missed a chance that I won't ever get ever again. I'm trying to be early for once. To see her get married. Mm -hmm. I did her whole wedding party makeup and was a big part of the day. And then he just shit on me essentially. And, um, my mom looked at me and she was like, why are you dating him? And I said, I have no idea. And two days later I broke up with him. We lived together for two months and that was probably the worst part was the most um, traumatic part is living with someone that you just don't like for two months and then them begging you to be with you but knowing that their intentions aren't good. And I'm glad I didn't cave in because I almost did Um, because when he finally moved out and then I moved in here like 10 days later, um, I found out that he had a girlfriend the whole time. So I think going through that experience, it sucked. It sucked a lot, and it's almost at a year since that happened. Mm-hmm. And um, it, but it made me become who I am. So I'm, um, if he watches this, probably won't. But uh, if he does, I'm thankful for him because without him, I wouldn't be Ashley. Um, I'd still be that codependent person, um, relying on other people to give me happiness. And so, but it sucked, and it was a lot, and um, yeah, not a, not a time I really want to go back to. So, yeah. Isn't it magical to have that perspective? Mm-hmm. Yes. I think that's why I'm, a lot of people say I, I seem older and I act um, wiser. I mean, I'm still really immature and I have a lot to learn. Um, 22. Like I, I don't know much, you know, but I feel like I've been through a lot. And so um, I used to dwell like with my dad. I used to be like, why does he not love me? but then not focus on the people that actually do love me, you know? And so that's, it it gets hard, you know, you still have those times where you doubt things, but for the most part, I'm just thankful for everything I have and everyone that chooses to be, Mm -hmm. like, choose me, I guess. Um, I found a lot of people that don't choose me and I'm over that. I'm over that whole moment, so. You're empowered. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Self-empowered. Yeah, would you say that? Yeah. I mean, I, it's like, I feel like empowerment is so vague. You know, you can be empowered by so many things. I'm empowered by seeing my best friend raise a beautiful baby boy. Like, I'm empowered by that Mm -hmm. to see how amazing she is, you know, see how 
she went through that whole change of her life at such a young age and is just so amazing and so incredible. And I see empowerment through my mom and I see empowerment through my cousins. Like my cousin is 17 years old and has almost 15,000 followers on TikTok. Like I'm empowered by a lot of things, but I empower myself too. Like when I post a photo, I feel empowered because I am doing that myself. Like I did that, you know, and it's just a cool thing. It's a cool thing. So, yeah. Where where do you, okay, so where do you draw beyond creativity? Where do you draw this philosophy from? What philosophy? Well, you're you're operating in the silver lining of life. <clears throat> if I don't have an unloving father in my life, well, perspective wise, at least I have loving people in my life. Mm-hmm. Where do you draw that from? Do you read? No, I don't read. Listen to podcasts. I can't tell you. Fucking I, the scroll, only scroll, podcast scroll. I like like listen to regularly is the call her daddy podcast. And that has nothing to do with self fulfillment. (laughs) That is like the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. It's amazing. And I like ride or die, but it is nothing to do with, um, I mean, I guess it's empowering, but like (laughs) comedic draw. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I don't read, I haven't read a book, um, probably since high school. I didn't even read books in college. I bought them all, but I never read them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know where I have that perspective from. I think it's just basically because I sat there dwelling my mm-hmm. whole life. Like picture being a 14-year-old girl and having – actually, no, because it didn't really it didn't really, really bother me not having a dad mm-hmm. um, until my grandpa passed away, mm-hmm. and then it bothered me. So it was like when I was 16, 17, 18, 19. Um, that's when it was like really hard and just sitting there dwelling like now my grandpa is gone and now I don't have that male role model that loves me because my grandpa loved me as if I was his own kid. Mm-hmm. And I, my relationship with him was so close. Firstborn and I'm a girl. So it's like inseparable, you know. I was just like I have videos of me with him and it's like almost like looks like my dad, you know, how we interact with each other. And it was like. I'm a year old and I'm just clinging to him. Like he's my everything. Mm-hmm. And he was, but I think that's when I started like dwelling on it was when I was like 16. I remember like being in school and like just hurting so bad mm-hmm. because I had my first soccer game and he wasn't there, mm-hmm. you know? And then it kind of brings that up. It's like, Oh, well my dad could be here, but he's not. And so I think I have that perspective because I'm done dwelling. Like I'm done sitting there waiting for people to um, choose me to um, value me, to respect me, I'm over that. Like, I don't need to wait for you. Um, you either choose it now or I'm my clock doesn't wait for anyone, you know, so. Do you feel that's why you you latch on to Cardi B? Probably. Because I think... She gives no fucks. That's what I'm saying. And she's like, she's empowered herself. Yeah. No, motherfucker. Yes, I was an escort and I stripped. Mm-hmm. whoop de fucking do Guess where I am now? Right. Look at me. Like, bad bitch alert. Yes. Get off my case. Yeah. And that's why I like vulnerability and transparency. Mm-hmm. When you just tell your story and leave it all out there. No one can say anything. They ain't got shit on you. Mm-hmm. That's it's the when best you hide about the shit. it. Exactly. It's when you hide shit is when they make up stories. It's like, hi, I'm here. This is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. If you have a question, you can ask me. Like, I always say that if I go live, ask me anything openly and honestly. I mean, there's a barrier to that. Like, if you were like, who would you do? What would you do with this so-and-so? Like, I'm not going to do that. But if you were like, how was your last relationship? I'd be like, it fucking sucked. Like, it, and that's not even like an ex-boyfriend. Like, it's just like, I consider a relationship even seeing someone. And that last one sucked. So it's just like, I'm really open about it. Like, I don't name drop but subliminal words are my thing. I mean, I might put them in the clouds underneath my eye makeup. Right. <laughs> just, just write a full blown name <laughs> with a fucking blood dripping off of it. <laughs> Why do you think I have this tattoo? It's a girl looking all pretty with a knife and blood. You know, hurt me, I'll hurt you. Just kidding. That was really dramatic. Okay, Crazy. interview interview is okay. over. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> hey, so what's your uh, next hair color? I, okay. I know you plot this shit. I do. Yeah. I always okay. So when I when I get my when I dye it's my hair, seasonal Nick. No, it's not. <laughs> first of all, because if it was seasonal, I'd be dyeing my hair orange, and that will never happen. So um, 
I always get my hair done between every six to eight weeks because mm-hmm. I'm super indecisive and I don't like the same thing, mm-hmm. which is why makeup works for me because I can always look different. Um, what I want, I'm dying. When is this coming out? Uh, next week. Okay, so I'm dying my hair next week, so it's okay. <laughs> what I want um, isn't always what I get just because it is hair and it is a process. But if you that. try sometimes. But if I got what I wanted, um, I really want to be the Joker for Halloween. So I want half green, half purple hair. Well, you better go to PanFest and find yourself a Harley Dean. I guess. <laughs> Just find someone to dress Pan up as. PanFest 2019. Right. <laughs> that doesn't exist. <laughs> That's not. That's called pride. It's called furry convention. No, <laughs> I don't think. I promise you, I'll never be at one of those. Why not? Because I don't want to be judgmental, and I would have to be judgmental there. They literally make these hotel owners provide big ass um, pits of sand that they can go to the bathroom in. Like yeah, a, I can't like get a down litter with, box. I can't get down with I'm that. Not I'm even sorry, kidding you, dude. I don't care. No. I would have to. I would have to take some kind of drug to go to that and participate in that. All the drugs. Okay, so um, you're gonna be the Joker. That's what I want, but I might not get green hair. Doesn't always work. <sighs> the process. Because you have to go down to light first yeah. and then build it back up. Mm-hmm. I did it with my mustache. My mustache was electric blue, like your like your hair, um, last February. That's awesome. For less than a day. <laughs> and you're <laughs> and like, I'm I, not. I got insecure because I had to fly to LA the next day. No, fuck it. And I was like, uh-uh. You think LA people have anything to can't say about that? Have you ever been there? Yeah. Can't yeah. do it. It's not anything different. They pro- they seem the weirdest shit out there. So it's still a little, like a Whatever. fucking mustache to it. A lip fuzzy. Hmm. My lip fuzzy was electric it's a, blue. It's a mood. It's, it's a, a moment. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I suppose. But for like, you can't shave your head, so you're stuck with this operation right here. Yeah, people always ask me if I'm going to go back natural. And I was like, no. And be that grandma with colored hair. Not everyone can pull it off. Yeah. I was in a wedding a couple weeks ago, and there's this granny who I kept getting spritzers for. <laughs> Shout out to White Claw. <laughs> Mango White Claw, what up? It's the best. But <laughs> she had purple hair. And I was the vibing. grandmas always have purple hair. Yeah, I was vibing. Yeah, I was vibing. And guess what? Good. She was the chillest. She was hitting my vape pen in the bathroom, oh, dude. And she was successful. Party. And she was successful. Okay. And she was down with the claw because there ain't no laws when you're drinking claws. Yeah, <laughs> straight up. No, I got a t-shirt idea. You want to hear it? Let's see. We got to figure out the order. Okay. No bras, white claws, yeehaws. Absolutely not. White Claw, no bra, yeehaw. <laughs> no. What are you talking about? That's a great one. Y- you say yeehaw <laughs> on a regular. Do you say that? No, I exactly. Don't. So don't make a shirt with it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm such an asshole. <laughs> so then, do we just get rid of yeehaw and go no bras and white claws? Um. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think that's the trend right now, though. What? No bras, white claws, not a lot of yeehaws. I mean, no yeehaws. What? Absolutely not. But we're ca- if we're catering to the um, to the country fest crowd and their cut off shirts. Does it look like I've ever been seen at country fest? Maybe. Nope. Absolutely not. So, what is your ideal festival then? I don't like them. They're dirty and gross. They touch my hair. No, it's essentially I don't like being hot. So that's the biggest thing. I suppose. Like I went to Soundset and I'm I was sweating over here. We gotta turn that bitch. Yeah, back right. Down. I'm not. I'm comfortable. I'm comfy. <laughs> my my face isn't melting off. You're yet. also dressed for winter, so yeah. that might be why. <laughs> okay. Um, no, I went to Soundset. I really like Soundset. I don't, it's local, so I like local stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but that day sucked because it was very hot. I had just gotten my hair done. The sun bleached my head. So that sucked. Turned my hair like almost white on the top because it bleached it. Um, my makeup lasted all day, but I was like really sweaty and I brought my setting spray and I would just spray my face every 20 minutes so it wouldn't melt off. Uh, Setting spray? Yeah. What is it? Harden it? (laughs) Hey guys, uh, can't undo this smile. I'm really mad. It's like... (laughs) 
<laughs> no, it sets everything in place. You haven't seen that. You don't know what that is. Here's the deal. This Alta and Mac universe. Sephora. Sephora, Sephora, whatever the hell. Sephora. No bras and yeehaws. I don't know and what no they call goes. themselves. <laughs> what they call themselves nowadays. They create so much shit. Yep. And I wanted to ask you this. I wanted to leave the episode on a high note, but we might get sad real quick and then bring it back around. Okay. The testing on animals. Not furry conventions, like legit animals yeah, yeah, I for gotta. makeup. Isn't that like a dark side of the industry? It is. It really is. And um, a lot of people are, are really against it, which like, yes, I don't, th- I don't. I'm not like, yes, let's test on animals. Like, absolutely not. I'm not like that. Um, there is a brand that I use one product of um, and then have a few Mac tests on animals. But I have really sensitive skin. And so I'm really particular about what I what I use on my face. And so um, that's like the only brand, though, that I use that I think. I think they still do. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. but They probably yeah. use plastic straws, too. Yeah. Same. I'm kidding. <laughs> All I see is Karkov. I see lots of Karkov. Kar- Karkov That's bottles. That's Ciroc. <laughs> oh, I just see all the Karkov bottles in the freaking recycling over there. Absolutely not. I'm just $7 kidding. $7 I'm vodka. just kidding. You already have your Halloween decorations up though. Mm-hmm. But, hey, Where's can you that? throw me that pumpkin? Which one? The big one? No, no, the fluffy the f- one. Do you see our night? That orange the one? The big ass one right there. <laughs> Damn, dude. Damn, dude. Oh. It's spooky season. Thought it was a pink cushion. Cool, man. Um, anything else you got coming up? Riddle me with something. Planned? Yeah. Anything coming up you um, want to announce? Oh, there's a string on there. You want because zombie pub crawl's coming up. Yeah, I won't I probably won't go. Yeah, but we still gotta set you up with some clients. Yeah. Maybe. All the clients. I've never done theatrical makeup like that. <clears throat> well. So kind of start. You can't tell me you don't know how to use glue. I mean, I've never used liquid latex, if that's what you're asking. Well, maybe we should have a trial run. <laughs> Do your makeup. I really want to... And make s- you look like Ashley Richter. No. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> that's... Listen, lady. I'll pan out for a day. But Don't the thing, say that. <laughs> but the thing is... is Don't we, say We can just use face swap on fucking Snapchat if we needed to. It doesn't exist anymore. Voila. Nick's Ashley Richter. Um, I really want to scare the shit out of my mom. People keep coming to me with that, and it's like, okay, you can, but you still have to pay me. What? Like, I've had numerous people be like, I want to scare my girlfriend. I want to scare yeah. my wife, but yeah. they don't want to pay me for the makeup. Well, they're fucking cheap. True. I want to scare my mom. Okay. That's really mean. All right. I want to scare my sister. That's also mean. <laughs> okay. What do you want to You're ruining like? it. I know. I'm killing the vibe. You're ruining it. Sorry. Okay, so I don't want to like the cliche where she comes home and I'm laying on the floor with freaking makeup on myself looking like I just got massacred by OJ. I'm more or less thinking like... Too soon. Yeah, let's... Because she knows I travel out there, right? Okay. Let's make it so like I'm a, a legit... She thinks I'm a zombie. Like whole body. Yeah, whole body. Um. Pretty intense. Oh, never mind. She doesn't know how to use liquid latex. I mean, it's probably not hard. I probably, I probably, if I can draw a skull on my f- eyelid, I think I can figure it out. Uh, there's levels to this. Mm, yeah, you're one to know. Let's not, <laughs> let's not get carried away. Okay, so how many piercings do you have in your nose? Four. Huh? Four. I have two on each side. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Um, did you get them all at the same time? No, I got this one 2016, and then I got the last three in the last eight months, really? nine months, yeah. Are they due to headaches? Is that why you got them? No, I just like them. Oh, really? Yeah. All right, we're trailing off. Okay, so where can people reach you? Uh, my Instagram, uh, at a Ashley Richter, three A's. Usually it shows up if you type in the three A's. Ashley Richter, yeah, Richter, Ashley. Richter. You know what's funny is that's what my friends like used to call me in high school. What? Hey, Ashley. You know, that was my, that's been my username since high school. I've had that name. 
What's your spirit animal? I don't know. About, no, yes, I do. A butterfly. It's a butterfly. I took a test on Google. <laughs> Google did. Someone asked me and I was like, I don't know. So I took a test and it said it was a butterfly. That's how you found out? Yeah. The oracle? Mm-hmm. Can we have some like uh, reasoning behind? I don't know because I'm <laughs> free butterfly. spirited. Butterflies roam around wherever they want to go. Yeah. That's kind of like how I am. They say if you have a dead grandma and you see a butterfly, that's your grandma. I don't have a dead grandma. Well, maybe that's why you never see butterflies. I see them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ashley, appreciate you. Am I supposed to say? <laughs> say bye. Thanks. Bye. Uga chaka, uga 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 chaka, uga 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 chaka, uga 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 chaka, uga uga.